aisle for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today's hearing is another unfortunate attempt by my Republican colleagues to muddy the water in an election year with no proof, no evidence, no wrongdoing at all by President Biden. The American people are tired of this charade. As I said before, my Republican colleagues simply grasp at straws that do not exist. While House Democrats and the Biden-Harris administration work to cut costs of prescription drugs, expand student loan forgiveness, and mitigate the threat of gun violence, Republican members of Congress continue to chase after Russian disinformation campaigns from the 2020 election, which have been thoroughly debunked again and again. And as usual, in this committee, we know who is in charge. It is the bondless, broke bluffer, twice impeached, four times indicted, insurrection initiator, election denying, self-declared dictator on day one, and puppet for Putin. The one who wants to terminate the Constitution and defund the FBI. The one who romanticized exchanging of love letters with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. The one who just last week embraced autocrat Orban of Hungary to discuss their diabolical plans to destroy our democracy. The one who proposed a policy to ban Muslims from this country. The one who just this week said any Jewish person who votes for a Democrat hates their religion and Israel. The one who called neo-Nazis carrying tiki torches tanting Jews will not replace us good people. The one who referred to African nations as, I quote, shithole countries. The one who called NFL players, the majority whom are black, sons of bitches for taking a knee in protest of the ever-present racial inequality and police brutality that continues to pervade our justice system. The one who called Mexicans rapists and promised to build a wall and have them pay for it, and in case you missed it, it didn't happen. The one who told women of color from the United, born in the United States, elected to Congress and serving on this very committee to go back to their own countries. The one who bragged about grabbing women by their private parts. The one who confused his rape victim whom he claimed was not his type for his very own ex-wife. The one who is an admitted and committed adulterer who attempted to pay off a porn star for her silence. The one who has publicly mocked people with disabilities. The one who dodged the draft and referred to prisoners of war as losers, the very people who pay a high price so we can enjoy the freedoms that far too many of us take for granted. The one who boasted about being able to stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue to shoot some and shoot someone and not lose votes. The one who promoted political and physical violence multiple times, including most recently at my rally in the home state, my home state of Ohio, where he declared there would be a bloodbath if he didn't win. The one who intentionally denied COVID was deadly and eventually suggested testing injecting bleach into our bodies to kill the respiratory virus that took the lives of one million people in the United States. The one who ordered his son-in-law get top secret security clearance overruling concerns flagged by official intelligence officials, who according to this committee's chairman admitted the former president's son-in-law crossed the line of ethics by accepting a two billion dollar investment into that very same son-in-law's fledgling firm only six months after leaving the White House. If any of this sounds crazy, it's because it is. This might sound unbelievable, but it's all true. These are facts indisputable facts, a thing that is known and proven to be true. This may be a foreign concept to some of my colleagues, but for those of us who still have a relationship with the truth, please know this is not an exhaustive list of inappropriate, unethical, and questionable behavior by the maniacal manipulator of Mar-a-Lago because I could go on, but I only have five minutes. Yet here we are again, trying to make sense out of nonsense. I would humbly, respectfully ask my Republican and colleagues on this committee to stop falling over yourselves to win the approval of one because millions of people are depending on you to defend our delicate democracy. And with that, I yield the remainder of my time to Ch Chair the, the ranking member. Seven seconds. 
Oh, I don't know that there's much time left, but thank you for that eloquent and compressed recitation of um, some of what we've lived with over the last few years.